Uh, take two. <laughs> I was not ready to go. I thought I was, except I didn't do my checklist. And that's actually one of the things that we're going to work on right now. Um, checklist. Uh, Twitch. So I started putting together a little checklist. Because all this stuff, it's not in my head yet, but also um, you should read the book, The Checklist Manifesto, um, which talks a lot about how good and important checklists can be. Why is the part? Oh, there we go. Machine is acting slow today. Manifesto. Checklist Manifesto. Uh, that's a good one. You should read that. Uh, you could probably boil it down to a pretty small amount, but it's basically talking about the importance of checklists and how, like, uh, airline pilots use checklists to do stuff. So I really like it. Um, I kind of have a checklist for getting set up for Twitch because there's a bunch of stuff that goes on to do the preparation. Um, especially, you know, like I'm on two different machines. Uh, or actually, I'm on one machine, but the first one goes in the second one. I need to make sure I've got like software closed and all my work, work stuff closed. Um, in fact, something that I didn't do this time yet, but I can do it right over here real quick is um, I just need to make sure that I'm not logged into uh, anything work related. Uh, and I'm not, okay, cool. Uh, and so actually what I should do is go ahead and log into um, which let's do this. I think I might already have that. Yeah, log back into sandbox account. So right here, log out of any AW, log out of AWS and log back into the sandbox account. So if I'm, I should just have that up and running, so that when if I switch over to it, I know that I'm in my sandbox and um, I know that I'm, so that I know that I'm in the sandbox to start with, and then secondarily, so it's just ready to go. Uh, let's do that. Uh, let's do this. Do this so there's no need for me to be doing this on stream I could have done this as prep work but I didn't go through that checklist um, and one of the reasons I didn't go through it is because it's not super great it's a little hard to look at um, it's just kind of a bunch of junk right all right so along in the sandbox so <laughs> uh, make a pit stop and make a pit stop uh, anyways I've got this checklist and I, I haven't I'm not actually using it yet. Um, and one of the ways that I've done stuff in the past is inside NVL, my little Grimoire and developer's notebook, um, is I would make little marks like this and then go through and uh, check them off like as I went through stuff. But like that's not the greatest experience, especially because you got, then have to go through and uncheck them all like manually. Um, and also, like, I don't like how uh, when you have a longer line, it kind of goes underneath. Um, it makes, you know, I wish this, whoops, that didn't work. Still not working. Why not working? Pretend that this may, here, pretend the M isn't there. And, like, I want the rest of it to be over there. Um, so, anyways, what I figured I'd do is... Um, take this checklist and actually turn it into an HTML page on my local site. So I have this local site that I can't find my mouse for that is running in, in MAMP, um, which just lets me run a one uh, lets me run an Apache server on my Mac easily. It just lets it fire up and go. So whenever I whenever I make a new page over here, like if I make a new tab, it just automatically launches to this web page, but that, or website slash page, but that's actually running off my computer. So that's why it's super fast, so it's in MAMP. Um, and so I've got a little command set up here, STL, which loads the file structure. So this is Sublime Text and these are the files. So here's the, this is the website. Um, and so it's a PHP server, which is cool because you can do some dynamic stuff with it or you can do dynamic stuff with it. Um, but so, uh, you know, here's just, here's all the links, hot links, Amazon, miscellaneous, like hot links, Amazon, miscellaneous. So that's the site. 
But what I'm thinking of doing, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to make another page here, and I'm going to put my checklist on it. Um, and then we're going to add some actual checkboxes so that when I'm going, so that what I can do is when I'm starting a, a, a broadcast, uh, I can just go through and like do the checklists and actually check them down. Uh, and then the cool thing is when I refresh the page, it'll just clear. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, Ta-da, that'll be the first thing we do. Uh, so I've got this uh, template that I'd set up in the past that gives me this just kind of like one column div with a little thin border around it of like however many pixels it is. Um, oh yeah, just I'm downloading some videos. That's what all that crap is in the background um, for making GIFs. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that straight over. Uh, I, I don't use any, I'm not using any framework for any of this stuff. Um, they're just straight complete pages. Uh, there's nothing uh, calling out or assembling or doing any, any type of uh, making new stuff. I just make straight flat PHP pages for this. Um, so we're going to make a new page here. Uh, give me one second, let me just verify. That that's doing its thing, and that this is doing its thing, and that this is doing its thing. Cool. Um, and right now, I'm just throwing all this stuff down in the in the root of the directory. Uh, I've started making some directories, but like this this website, like it's it's completely personal. It's on my machine, so I can completely move stuff back and forth. There's no, I don't have to worry about bookmarking or like dealing with permalinks or anything like that. So I'm I'm not thinking super f hard about like, ooh, how do I want to like make sure that this is like, you know, architected f f as, impos as as much as possible for the infinity of time. Like, I'm just kind of doing an iterative approach on this. So this is another one where it's just like, okay, I've got this page. And so I'm going to yank out. So this is Launchpad, where to call it, where to call it. Um, Twitch checklist for now. Uh, this current track stuff. I've got a, I've got a little external commands there that show you the artist and the um, track that's currently playing on Spotify, uh, but it it takes like a half second to to get that to actually do the polls, and that makes the page load slower. So I'm not doing that right now. Um, this is a test. Let's see if this works. And we're going to call this Twitch checklist.php. Whoops. Dot PHP. Save. Use PHP. Uh, and then over here. So I just kind of keep adding stuff at the top, is the way that I do this half the time. Uh, it and then we're gonna close that or close that okay uh i still haven't bought sublime text i will i swear um but so now if we refresh this page here's our twitch twitch checklist link i need to add some padding into the li's to get a little extra space in between there we'll probably do that in a minute um this is a test there we go let me turn on the brightness on the sucker Uh, let me do that. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know about this music. Hopefully it's not too bad back in the background. I should mark that at some point. But that's all right. Um, cool. So now what I want to do is, um, so this is my checklist. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess around with some um, messing around with some automation in Python that I actually don't know how to do yet. 
that's a little bit overkill for what I'm doing. Uh, but it's an interesting thing. So what I want to do is like I could do this by hand. I could I could really easily go through and put a, a UL up here and then make each one of these LIs and because uh, there's no length and put a check box in front of them. Um, start with I'm going to get these all this way. But what I'd like to try and do is write a little script to do that for me. Um, and this is not. Um, not in any way necessary. It's just something I'm trying to figure out how to do a little bit more of. Um, and I don't know if I've got a line by line. Generate uh, random. So basically, what I want to do read a file line by line. Read S3 into a variable. Find and replace. What I'm looking for is not a fan of the song. Like it sounds a little bit too, I don't know, whatever. -y. What I'm looking for is a way to process. So I can do a file line by line. I've got that. Um, give me one second. I just want to look and make sure when I click on file line by line. Yeah, so it just don't run these in code runner. It'll bog down. File read. Count and rate. So that's how you do a line by line read. Um, oh yeah, I should show you my Git credentials. This is kind of cool. I, uh, I encrypt my credentials now, and I've got this little command that I use to pull them off the file, just so that I can uh, I don't accidentally flash credentials on screen. They're all encrypted. Um, but we don't need that at the moment. I don't need that at the moment. So let me see how to do. Um, well, so the first thing we can do on Python 3, okay, uh, is just lines equals, and then with Python, can't we just do three quotes and then that, and then these three quotes? There you go, okay. Um, so I guess if we've got that, what we could do is we could split that. Um, blob of text. All right, so we've got a blob of text. See, in What's funny is in Perl, what I would have done is actually there's a, a way that you could do this. I don't think it's the same thing in um, Python, but you can put an end at the end of your script and then everything below there acts as like a file. Uh, but we don't really need it to be a file or to act like a file. It can just act like a blob of text for this one, right? Because we should be able to do a split um, by split. Split a single, oh, it's pandas. Okay, no, that's the thing I was doing. So, Python split, split, whoa, slip. Image processing tool, what is that? Research software impact. Like different image processing tools for use with log gabber. No idea. It's slow. Anyways, we go back and find split. Uh, W3 schools, blah, 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 which is fine. I just, something always feels a little bit off about that, but they're 
not that. Um, so split, we're gonna to wanna to split, I just couldn't remember the syntax, or we do the splits, but yeah, so it's gonna be, um, lines is gonna be blob of text, split on, I'm guessing that works. I really should use PyCharm. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, the first one, yeah, it splits with the first line. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna use PyCharm. Uh, and give me one second, let me fire that up. Let's see how that goes. Close. Don't need that. We can get the, that, and that, and that, and that, and that. How do we close that? I'm not sure how that opened, actually. There we go. Uh, close that. Close that. Close that. Close that. Uh, actually, let me do. What should I do? I should add this. I just want to get that to where it's not. So we're gonna add another thing to the list. Oh, and actually, I guess we should do it in Sublime Text. Ah! Oh my god. So, um, yeah. That way, I just don't have to close stuff out, and it'll just be there. Um, where was I? I'm going to PyCharm. So let's do this. Let's do a new project. We're going to do this on the desktop and just call it Scratchpad. Python Scratchpad. Uh, do we just want to call it Scratchpad? Let's call it Scratchpad. Great. Open. Uh, Python virtual environment, cool. Uh, actually, you know what we should do is we're going to drop into another one and do this. Now I am trying to think about like future stuff. Um, Now I'm overthinking it. Okay, scratch head, pie charm. There we go. That was a lot of overthinking, but like this is one of those like you do a little bit of the thinking of like how do we want to get stuff set up. So this is just I've got scratch pad now that I can do other stuff in, but like pie charm is in here, so I've got that basic thing. Um, create. Let's do it. And so it's gonna make a virtual environment for us. Stuff apparently already there. Crazy. Um, hi, PyCharm. Uh, print hi, hi, PyCharm. Yeah, cool. Okay, so it's got the main. Let's do this. We're going to make a new folder file. Sorry. Uh, this could be independent, and we're going to call this. What are we going to call this? Oh, I should have done it. Eh, I'll do it here and I'll put it in Code Runner because Code Runner is where I keep stuff happy and alive, basically. Um, uh, process 
lines. I'm not in vim. I don't need to do i. Uh, so user bin environment Python, which is just how I start stuff. Um, just to make sure we're here. Because we need to do this to make sure we're here. Wait, how do we choose this other file? Still getting used to PyCharm. I run that, it runs that. How do I run this? Oh, there we go. And that came in. Okay, cool. Here we go. So, uh, is blob reserved word? We'll find out. Yeah, so with Python, you can do those three thingamabobs, which is awesome. Uh, open PyCharm and scratchpad. So here's our data. And then, um, Where I was headed with this is in PyCharm, I'm, I'm getting better or I'm learning more about PyCharm and it's a debugger. Um, and what we can do, I believe, is lines equals blob dot split on new line. And then we just put a breakpoint. Maybe. Can you put a breakpoint? Oh, maybe it's here. There you go. Can you help me put one on an empty line? Oh, weird. I don't know that. I guess it's got to be on a, the start of a line. Yep. Anyways, if I run this with the debugger, run with debug process lines, it's going to stop right there. And then I've got. So blob's a string with all that stuff in there. But shouldn't it show me... Well, I guess it stopped before it processed this line. So it doesn't have... It doesn't have lines in it. Uh, if we step, it's just going to go to the next thing. Um, How do you do that? Like, how would I do that to get it? To, I mean, I could do this. I could just put a print down here. And if I stop this here, I'm going to do the hotkey for it, which is uh, control R or yeah, control R, whatever. No, it didn't, it printed it. What the hell? That was run. Uh, control D is gonna be the debug. Now it stopped. So it stopped in front of line 26. Yeah, now I can see, and basically what I was trying to do is I was trying to look into the lines. Um, and so this shows me what, what the um, dictionary is. I think it's a dictionary. Um, cool. So this is funny because I'm doing this. It's interesting to be doing this on a stream because I'm kind of thinking about it differently and doing it a little bit differently than I might have otherwise. Um, but I like it. It's fun. Uh, so let's do this. Um, process. Blob. So here's our blob. And then we're going to process blob, blob. Oops. Ah, oh, you and your hotkeys, PyCharm. I do like your autocomplete, though. So I think I can just keep using the same thing here, right? Uh, print blob, that should just print it out. Not blog, blob. Uh, I'm just gonna run it this time. Stop and rerun, please. Yeah, so that just puking it out. 
And then so lines is back to this, which is blob that split slash n go. I'm just going to do this so I can put a breakpoint here just to get used to it. Like this is just me learning. Yeah, so now you can see our variable blob has all the text in it. So the debug, the big, when the debug fires, I've got access to, to the environment, to the internal environment. And so here's lines. Cool. Um, it's a hotkey for stop. Control F2. But I don't have my hotkeys are mapped to the media keys, so that won't work. Uh, and again, I could have I could have done this by hand for forever ago, but like this is the practice of figuring out the thing, uh, and I want to figure out the thing. So, um, so now we want to do we want to loop through the lines for line and lines print line. I just want to make sure that goes and print stuff out for me. So I don't know if there's a good way to debug that. I'm just going to run it. That's cool. So what we could do right here is, well, we know, so the output that I want to have is a line item and then input type equals checkbox. And then I'm going to put the line in there. I know there's different ways to do the formatting. I haven't learned the newer one yet. That'll be something I mess around with at some other point. So now what we should get is HTML output, basically. The two things, but I can tell you that there's two things that are going to happen. It's going to give me a blank one and it's going to keep this dash in there. And so I wanted to address both of those, but let me just make sure this is working first. Yeah. So that first line is empty. I don't want that. And then the other lines have this dash in front of it. Um, but I could, so like I could, like this is, well, come on. I think I was that Summer Warm song again. Um, I don't know how much this thing's actually repeating. So if we look at this, on our web page. Oops. So this is this is largely what I'm looking for, right? I want to be able. Oh, these are hard targets to hit. Um, I want to be able to just run this checkbox, and then after I've done a Twitch stream, when I refresh the page, the next time I come back, or when the next time I come back to it, it's ready to go again. Um, Actually, I can get these pre's out of here now, and I can put in a UL, so we're making a little progress. So, unordered list, drop the pre, close that UL. See if that looks a little different, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll adjust this a little bit when I start making more progress. So the first thing I want to try and do is take out the items that have um, blank lines. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, I'm going to go with a regular expression, which is my go-to to get there. Um, oh, the first thing I'm going to do is do this. Launchpad. Let's just call it Twitch checklist. Just because that way it doesn't say launchpad, launchpad. It says Twitch checklist. Um, So my, my initial reaction and the thing that I'm going to try is, so let me back this up, see if I can say this well. There's actually two places that empty lines are showing up. There's the bottom one and the top one. Um, and the reason those are showing up is because of the way that I did, uh, I, I could make them both go away by putting the text right up on the start and end of the of the line. So if I do this, and I hit the right key, key, um, 
you'll see that the they both went away. Uh, but I don't want to rely on having to do that. Um, I want I want to remove any new lines because it's possible too that. Um, and I'm thinking about this just a little bit longer term, but I know in the past that I also have had um, lists that are like this, right? And I want all those new lines gone when I'm doing this particular one. I want it to be able to just go into a um, uh, single bullet points um, and the checklists uh, or check marks. See if I gets there. Uh, so I want to take care of the I want to take care of the new lines programmatic or the empty lines programmatically. Um, so this is where Python regular expressions. Um, so in Perl, I know how to do this stuff cold hat or I used to. Um, but it's still, it takes me a little bit to get my head around in Python. Also, I don't program that much, so this is still me just figuring stuff out, right? Um, compile a pattern and see if it matches. So here is, so that's substitution, and there's a search. Yeah, match is, if it hits at the beginning of the string, search. Right, so what we want to do First thing we want to do is import re for regular expressions. It's not a thing. Like it's an interesting choice to me because like in Perl they're just baked in. This you got to do a module, but like that's cool. It keeps the language uh, moving. Um, so we're gonna do that. We're compile. So here, how do we do it without compiling? Because uh, I'm just looking for. That does compile. That just does sub. That just a sub. So could we just do? Pattern dot search. Date. So I want to see. I want to see if you, if so. Like, I'm just curious to see if there's like I know how to do like that should work here. Let's do it with that. Let's make this work. Um, and we're gonna type it just to get it on our fingers a little bit. So, uh, new line match. I don't know what the, I don't have a good naming thing here. And so we're just going to do re compile. And then we just put it in quotes. Yeah. And so we want to do the start of the string, which is this one, which is this one, this one. There it is. Um, with spaces and zero or more of them. Wow, I can't find the right keys here at all. And the end of the string. I'm not gonna go into regular expressions right now. It's a whole different ballgame. Um, but basically what this says is, start at the start of the string, which is this caret. Slash s says, give me any spaces. The star is zero or more, like, and we want zero or more because it may be that there's that there aren't any, and then hit the end of the string. So the basically what that is is only only um, white space stuff will be there, and I think that'll and it was split on a new line, so there shouldn't actually be anything in there. It should be an empty string, um, but that would also deal with so like if if I had a space here, this would capture that, I think. So there's a new line match, and then it's going to be down here. We're going to say if uh, 
Uh, is it if not? Can you just do if not? So basically, if I if I don't find just the spaces and nothing else in there, print this. Let's see if that works. Oh, looks like it worked. Later. Remind me tomorrow. Probably a high security update. Yeah, cool. So that worked. It uh, it pulled out. Um, so if I don't have that in there, you can see this extra at the bottom and this extra at the top. Uh, but by putting in this little regular expression and matching for it and saying, you know, I don't want those. Uh, it strips out. It strips out those other ones. So that's cool. So we just made made a little progress. Uh, which I'm just gonna paste it in. And I could actually write that to a file and then include it here. But that's now we're getting ridiculous. Um, if I was better and faster at this stuff, I might actually try that. There you go. So. We've the we've removed the top and the bottom ones. So now what we need to do is remove the dashes at the at the start. Um, so let's go back to PyCharm. Let's try to do that. So the pattern is always the same. There's a space. Uh, is a space there? No. Okay. So I'm putting in the space here. Let me do this. This will be a little better. So the pattern is always saying at the start of the string. There's a dash, and then a space, and then our characters. So what we need to do now is substitution. Oh, yeah, so what I was going to say earlier is like, I guess it's fine to compile this. I was just, I'm always curious if you could just do it without the compilation. You should probably always compile it unless you're just doing it once. But then even still, just always have it. Um, I don't know, I had some discussions with somebody else. He's like, ah, don't compile it. I'm like, all right, whatever. Um, the, so we've, we've stripped out our new line. So now what we need to do is, is strip, strip out those. Um, and so we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to my little notes about uh, find and replace. Um, So this is just updated string. So since we're going to run this a couple different, like every for every line, I am going to go like it does make sense to compile this. So replace pattern equals re compile. Except, yeah, see, it's so weird because it's compiled and you just throw the pattern in. Um, it's it's slightly less confusing for me, and I, I'm, I'm fine with it either way, but like it's slightly less confusing for me if we actually just do it right here. Um, so the thing that I want to mess with is the line itself. And so line without without dash. And right now I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna do kind of the Sandy Metz thing of just make, of just kind of keeping it green. I, and I'm like, I'm not writing tests for this. Um, I don't really, have, maybe I should start writing tests for some of this stuff. Probably start doing that. Just to get in the habit. Um, so you should see the same thing, because all I'm doing is moving, uh, I'm hitting the wrong key. Uh, all I'm doing is moving our line into a variable. But now what I've got is, so that that's the output. So now when I mess with this line, I'll see the output automatically. I don't have to copy stuff down again. I've already made that change. Um, and so here's basically what I'm going to be doing. So we're going to do re.sub for substitution, I'm guessing. And then we pass the pattern. And then the replacement and then the line. And if I'm not mistaken, this shouldn't do anything. This should just run without actually changing anything. 
Yep, so we see the same thing. Because um, the I didn't uh, the pattern I passed was nothing, and the replacement I passed was nothing, and then the line is what gets adjusted. But because there's no pattern and there's no replacement, nothing happens. But if we start at the start of the line and we do a dash and a space, if we watch right here and you know up that whole row, there we go, got it cleaned out. Um, so that's cool. That's got a and so and the other neat thing about that is that would if you send in a blob of text. So like on this last one, um, if you send in a blob of text that doesn't have that, it's not going to match the pattern, so it's not going to do a replacement. So it's the, the line still out, outputs. Um, this is cool. I, like this is this is just one of those handy little things. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have done this in JavaScript. Um, Maybe we'll do that at some other point. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because I like these little tools that do things like this. Um, and I use them in that code runner application all the time. Wow, it's dark. Um, but, I, but I'm interested in actually getting them onto my little launchpad web server so that they're just sitting there and they're not in a different application. And also with the, with the code runner, you saw I've got 100 scripts in there and they're... They just have different file and it, like so they're not organized particularly well. Um, I could go through and do some organization or whatever, but I also just like the idea of having it basically just in my web interface, the thing that I'm always in. Just like make a two, new tab and then like I've got one that like I want to invert the order of things. Um, I want to alphabetize things. Um, you know, I've got a couple other things like that that are just handy little tools to have that can just be these little pieces of JavaScript that'll that'll do that work. Um, I, if I had thought about that earlier, I would have done this one. Um, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just, just processing the lines out. There we go. We've got it. Um, so we got this, we're going to drop that in here. We're going to look at this, we're gonna refresh and there, there we go. Uh, cool. So now we should figure out how to style it. Um, again, song. It's the same song. What the hell's going on? Has it been the same song this whole time? I was trying to go with more just backgroundy type music, but like I don't know if this is gonna be more distracting or not to have lyrics back there. Um, I'll, one of these days I'll review this stuff. Um, now I'm playing with music. I gotta stop that. Uh, cool. So we got some of that. Now what we need to do, I guess we can just style it a little bit. Um, so funny because I'm like, I'm a, uh, oh, hang on, let me turn on some light. How about that? Also, I'm going to grab a drink. I'll be right back.
Uh, let's see. So what I should have done. Should have left that going. And so it's cool. Excuse me. I want to throw that my music cues. So another potential thing I can do at some point is um, put a little database behind this. How do you spell hamster? Hamster? Okay, there you go. Um, so whatever, this this is just what I know. So I'm doing it right now because I wanted to get some stuff out the door. And it works. And like it doesn't take overhead. So, but as I get more into doing this stuff, I may play around with other frameworks and other things like that. I'm not, I, I, I'm not a, against them. I just, I know how to do this right now and I want to get the thing out the door rather than go learn some other stuff. Over time, I want to go learn some other stuff, but that's not the focus here. Um, so here's our tw Twitch, test Twitch checklist. I wrote a pen that too. Uh, we'll put that under music. Yeah, I, I still haven't found like the good, is there like a CSS cookbook? Amazon, there you go, CSS cookbook. That's kind of what I want. I should get that. Um, like CSS wasn't a thing when I started. And I kept up with it a little bit at the start, but then I kind of got out of the gig of doing front end work and it progressed well beyond what I understand about it. Um, but this looks interesting. But like everything, like you can find, like every time I've messed with CSS, I haven't, what I'm, what I'm looking for is something like the CSS cookbook. It's really what I want. It's like, here's a bunch of recipes. And like, um, was it CSS tricks? What's the, um, is this one I'm thinking of? Yeah, from Chris Coyer, I think. I don't know how to say his name. Um, but like, there's a bunch of good stuff in here, but like, I. I don't know, it feels, I, I, I still ha feel like I haven't found the right, like, okay, here's here's the thing, and here's, like, the understanding, and here's the, the way to kind of bounce through it. Because, like, all, all that I've found has been, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody else about this on Twitter. Uh, that mic's pretty hot, isn't it? Um, I was having a conversation with somebody else about this on Twitter about, like, the last, like, Sorry, it's actually on Discord. Never mind. Whatever. I was having a conversation with somebody about it. And like it doesn't feel like or I haven't seen a good like 101 solid 101 course like from start to finish of like if you just go down this track on these things, you will actually be in pretty good shape. Like I've seen some things like on Python or whatever, and I've done a couple of them, but it's like None of them felt right to me. Um, and there's a bunch of them out there. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying I haven't found it. Um, the and I don't do that much looking for them, but it's still like I was I was banging around uh, 
a friend was asking me, he's like, oh, I'm interested in doing some coding stuff or whatever. He's like, what would you recommend? And I like, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything that I recommended because I was looking at the start of all these things and they just didn't, they didn't work well for me or for whatever. Or like, I, 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 trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody who hadn't seen any of this stuff before, it, I couldn't get through what those things were talking about. Whatever. So at some point, I'm going to make my own course. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I probably am. No, I'm going to. Uh, but it'll be free. Um, uh, anyways, I should read this Jamstack article because I like the idea behind Jamstack. Anyways, uh, so yeah. What am I doing? Silent check boxes. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, see, every, like I can keep finding all the individual parts for lots of the stuff that I do, but I don't have like the concept of the whole. Um, I mean, I kind of do, but like not really for all of it. And I'm sure this book, and it's really, it's a, a, a really good um, quote that I saw from somebody who was learning Ruby. And I wish, Uh, where are my quotes? It's on quotes. This woman nailed it when she was like, and I, I don't think, I don't think I caught it. I think I'm just looping. Um, but her point, she had like a, a list of things that she learned about learning uh, when she was programming or learning to program. Uh, and one of the things she said is like prefer books over blogs. And I really like that because you get the full like, it's a, it's, a, it's a central narrative or it's a single narrative, assuming the author did it as a single narrative, which hopefully they did. Um, I mean, that's, or they're single narratives, like whatever. It could be chapters in each one. What you get the point. Um, I hope you get the point. Um, as compared to blogs, which is like all these little discrete pieces that are kind of all over the place, and like me talking right now, all over the place. Um, but like, and, but I, but it it feels like there should be a web version of a book that gives you that single concise narrative about how to do the thing. Um, and I just haven't seen those yet. And I'm not saying like a book translated into a website, that's kind of what it would be like, but not really. Like you should use the dynamicness of the web as its own thing to actually push in and then make it happen. Um, this will all be part of my manifesto. Uh, Actually, no, it'll just be part of one of the reasons I do this stuff. So I'm, I'm looking I'm looking to do this at some point, and that'll be something that I actually do as part of this process. So I'll, I'll, build, um, I'll build it. So like one of the ideas that I've got is, um, what am I doing? I'll put it in Twitch ideas. Uh, like the ones and zeros. So there's a really good book out there. Um, I see C R E T language, whatever that should get me there. Hidden language. So yeah, uh, that's fine. Uh, Actually, hang on. I have an idea. Be right back. Um, sorry, thing. Um, I 
but I have this idea about a demonstration page, and this would be just kind of understanding a little bit more about how computers work for people that are interested in that in terms of the ones and zeros that are underneath it. And this would be a, a web page that lets you actually just have radio buttons for ones and zeros and then walk you through like, hey, here's the most basic part of a computer, which is the bit, the one bit, and you could just flash it between zero and one and zero and one. And then talk about how it's kind of like a light switch. And then say, if you actually arrange uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tube lights, you can make a one of the eight digit, the, you know, like a seven digit panels uh, for numbers. And like, you can turn these on and that's how you get there. And like, then you can go that, like you can keep progressing into like showing how it's all down to ones and zeros underneath. I'll build that page on here. Um, that's just, but that's kind of a one-off. So I'm, I'm gonna build things like that, that uh, are educational. I mean, they're, they're, designed, they're designed to educate. They're designed to show you how a thing works. Um, and then on top of that, the thing that I've been kicking around that I, I'm, I'm going to do it, like it's gonna happen, is is actually kind of trying to come up with my own, or not trying to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put forth my version of how to learn how to program. Um, and it's, I'm just gonna like, and it'll just be like, it's gonna be one big experiment on this thing. Um, and so the, the trick is a bunch of them are gonna be like this, where I was like working on stuff and now I'm just talking. Um, But then I'll also need to go through and actually like, and so some of this is also me getting my head around stuff. Um, but the idea would be if people are watching too, they could comment secondarily. Uh, this will help me kind of like define stuff and I can actually go back and record it for real. Um, or not record it for real, but I can actually make recordings specifically designed to be videos um, or VODs or whatever. Uh, so yeah, that. So anyways, I'm making checkboxes. Um, how do you style a checkbox? Uh, or is there a three modern browser? Yeah, see, this is also funny because it's like widespread availability. What was this first answered? 19, oh, it's been edited in 19. What was it first answered? Oh, it's community wiki. That's weird. I don't know. Um, see what this one's got. Let's begin. Before and after using forms, the fact that pseudo content works in the form of the WebKit is a bug because it could not call content. And see, this is one of those where this is this is a next level up. This assumes stuff that I don't know. Um, Uh, chatters and borders. Uh, see, this is, and like there's a bunch, so like the thing that I would do differently here is like there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Like start with one. Um, class regular checkbox, okay. Nope, wrong page. I thought not a save. Uh, oh, so this is cool too. So we've got, we still have, oh, <laughs> actually, you know what we should do? We should do it here. Oh, you know what, I might, no, I'm not gonna do that. I could still have this. Um, I 
write that to a file and then include the file. Uh, if I if I if I need to make any more changes to it, I'll probably do that. Um, which is a little overkill. And the other thing I could do is like I could have processed. Oh, I could have done that in PHP too. I could have just had a text file. Oh, I probably should have. That would have been even better. Um, I should have just had a text file. I'm not gonna go back and change it because it's fine right now. If I get tired of it or whatever, um, you have a text file and you point PHP at the text file and you have PHP to the assembly of the of the LIs. Um, the only reason that I'm thinking about that is that makes it easier to add and, and add stuff because I don't have to like, you know, copy and then make a new thing and then do whatever. Um, it would just be adding a line to text file, um, and of course. The other step up will be um, some amount of like creating uh, uh, our little database or something back there. And I'll, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm debating. What, so I think maybe what I'm going to do is I'll, and this is just kicking around ideas for future stuff. Um, I'll probably at one point make my own little database and make the connections and do it just to do it, even though. If you're gonna do that, you should use a framework, and then I'll also use a framework. But it'll be a little bit of a just an experiment to build, or like just a, a demonstration of like here's what's happening, here's the basics of what's happening back in the background when you're using a framework and the and the communications back and forth to the database, and here's how it does the authentication and passes all that other junk and stuff. And like that's probably super obvious, but again, I'm just this is we're just doing the thing, so we'll see what happens. Um, the that's a lot of double work to do that, but it might be interesting to try it. But probably not. Yeah, I'll probably just use the framework if I'm going to do that. Um, it'd be a good time to learn a framework too. Uh, so, anyways, we got regular checkboxes in there. What's going to happen now? They disappeared. Not what I was expecting. And nothing here is obvious. Okay, so that didn't do anything. Um, and like, it's not showing me what's actually happening here. It's just a bunch of code. But it never actually shows me what the thing is. Yeah, I like that article. There we go, custom checkbox, custom radio button. Customize the label, the container. Hide the browser's default checkbox, create a custom checkbox. So again, like I, I wanna see this built up step by step so that I have an understanding of what's going on. Like I can kind of get there by like walking through this stuff. And like I could do that myself, but like walk through the process. Customize the label, the container. I guess that's up here. Add CSS. Hide the browser's default checks. Container.input. Okay, yeah, because they're checkbox inputs. Gotcha. Oh, and the span of a check mark. So why are you? See this, this doesn't make sense to me. There's an input of a checkbox. They're hiding that and then they're making a span to replace the checkbox. Create a custom checkbox. Oh my god, no. That can't be the way, that can't be the only way to do it. You have to be able to do it. I would expect. Maybe you can't. That would be, when is this? Here's the other trick. When was this written? Because that's the other thing about all this stuff is like, I could be looking at a 10 year old article right now 
and there could be completely new ways to do it. But maybe that's, I mean, maybe that's it. How to style a checkbox without using any CSS framework. Okay, this is good. I like this, this is a good start. But now, okay, step one, hide the input element. Okay, I guess you gotta do it. Add a span element and apply your custom style by creating a class. See, this is better because it's actually explaining what's going on in very short, concise sentences. Like this, it just says, let's create them. And it just says, customize the label, hide the route. Like it doesn't talk about the why or the how, and like it's just in code. Like this is better. Yeah. This is helpful. This sentence is good. HTML input checkboxes cannot be customized with any properties. So you have to get creative in how we customize the input element. When is this written? Ah, I wish there were dates on things. Copyright 2020, because that's dynamic. Okay, whatever. Um, So you can't use display none because that makes it eventless or it's not lit. It basically won't pick up clicks in your JavaScript. Um, click back as you checked or unclick. Okay, yep. And this is helpful because it's telling me why, like here are the three options. Here's why two of them won't work. Um, this is a really good article. Get on it, app it. Does your blog have RSS on it? What was lethal? The hardware is lethal. Thought leadership. Uh, some of these may be like, ugh. Uh, does your blog have RSS? No, fail. Make sure it's not sitting at your uh, root. Fail. Still a good article. Uh, we're gonna pen this while we think about it. CSS. I almost never go back and look at those, but every now and then they're helpful. Um, Yeah, and so here's a nice little just clip of, oh, it's not selectable text though. Oh, you goofed it. You were doing so good. Uh, and see why, yeah, so whatever. It's a regular checkbox. I'm just gonna get rid of all this crap right now. Um, it's a regular checkbox. We've got it classed out. I don't, why is the position in there? It doesn't explain that. I wish it would explain that. And like why the cursor pointer? Like I wanna, I wanna know what, what every single one of these lines does. And I can go figure that out. But right now I'm just looking to make some progress. Um, also, it's thundering a lot. Um, oh, what? Okay, actually. Opacity. Not so much. Okay, so that just made it disappear. Wait, absolute? Do anything. So that moves it back over. Okay. I 
One of these days I'm gonna tab properly. There we go. Oh, it's because it's on the wrong. Which one was it? This one? This one? This one? This one? Cursor equals pointer. So, oh, I know what's going on. Let's do this. Let's go visit another browser so that we can tab back and forth. Um, what are we doing? Twitch checklist? Actually, just to see. Yeah, okay. So I just wanted to see it in two different browsers. Um, so that makes it disappear, disappear. I don't know if it, I want to know what the cursor. So I'm not seeing anything really happen here. Oops, that was not what I meant. Okay, so there's where you're getting your, your pointer back. Okay, all those things make sense. Now, I wish it, I wish it had explained them, but like, you can go through line by line and figure this stuff out. So here's the thing I'm thinking, is, is it worth Or not as it worth, but like one of the things I'm considering is like, okay, this is a good article, but it's like, it could be improved. Also, it could be video. Um, like, is it worth making a video about this? Wow, look at all that stuff. Um, but in going through line by line, and then and then also talking through it and showing it on video. Um, but like, if I'm going to do a video on how to style a CSS checkbox, like I'm going to it like it's going to take some research and some other stuff too. Um, excuse me. Um, but we're going to add that to the ideas. Um, See, this is a new thing for me. It's like, I, I'm i okay with the fact that I may or may not completely remember all those things and I'm not trying to like write it down and define exactly what everything does and like all that stuff. That's a new, that's a new thing for me. Um, yeah, so with opacity zero and these other things, this is what we get is nothing. So now we add a span element. What do we need a span element? So it's writing input checkbox. Showing a custom style element that appears in the place. We use a span as a placeholder. Okay, cool. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so you use a span over a div because a span only takes up a small amount of space versus a div which takes 100% of the width of the um, area that it's in. Ah, uh, <laughs> So now actually we get to add this back in. That's okay. I'm still not going to do, I'm still not going to write it to a file yet. Uh, span, what was the, and we had a class. Checkbox span. Right, it just closes, yep. Uh, so let's run that. Grab this. D 
do this, do that, do that. Oh yeah, part of the, by the way, one of the reasons I'm not super interested in using a framework is, and granted it's gonna be cached, but watch how quickly this page loads. Lots of frameworks don't load that fast. Um, and I care about the speed of that thing particularly, and things in general. Uh, we don't need hamster dance anymore. Hamster dance. Checkbox hack and things you can do with it. I kind of forgot where I was. There we go. Let's style the column check for extra unchecks. See, like this, this is where it, it jumps. Well, two things. One, I should be able to copy that. Two, that's a whole bunch of crap. And like explain it. And like you don't have to explain it all line by line, but at least explain the chunks of it. So like I get top left width height, right? Height width, whatever. Um, just say, this is how you set the border. And then border radius five, border seven. Um, so custom check, checkbox label, checkbox custom. This is very, I feel like the end of Titanic right now or something. Cut through featuring Jones. Thank you behind this. Don't screw it up. Um, so this is all for checkbox custom. And like, what's this checkbox custom after? And again, for the check state, now I can see it work. One last thing. Incorporating some fun. You can find the demo source below. But, uh, oh, well, here's where I can at least, nope, maybe. Can I capture it here? Nope. Okay, here's all the code. In a very small window. Can I go to code? Oh, code pen. That's the other one I was thinking of. Code pen. And like, yeah, see, like, this is also like one of those, don't import a font. Um, don't set the byte, like only show me the thing that I'm working on. If you do the font, do it last and do it as a, like a, I don't know, a thing, explain it. Every line should be explained. That's, that's my new. Every. Rubric? No. Metric? Heuristic? Why typing no working? What the hell's going on? Google freaked out there. Um, 
Red Coat Ten Go. Yeah, it's like, what's this card? Input title, like none of this stuff. Styling checkbox starts. Okay, so at least they comment that. But like, what's all this crap? Turns out that's important. Editor X, design fluid sites from idea to production. Okay, I'll get rid of that. Go away, thank you. Oh crap. There we go. So that's kind of messed up. Input title, card. Yeah, you know what would be cool to do is to just come up with a list of like a whole bunch of stuff. And like, all, I'm sure all this stuff is out there, but it would be cool to just have like whatever the CSS tricks dude, Chris Quayer, um, and just be like, okay, let's go. Here is a thing I want to do a simple like thing, or hopefully simple. Let's find it. Let's do it. Um, see, it doesn't explain any of this before or after stuff. And like, I can copy and paste all this stuff and just have it go, right? Let's see what happens. Um, but like, I wanna understand what's going on. And that's not what's happening. Nope, nothing happened. Yeah, well, they've got diff label checkbox custom circular. Probably don't need the cards. Checkbox container. Okay. Check sock container, okay, input type. Like, I don't know, I, I, I still haven't figured out and really looked up and try to understand what clear both does. Checkbox label. I don't care about the label. Not using the label. Here's where we make it go away. Okay, we got that. Here, can you move this? Oops. Wrong screen. Oh, it's looking for checkbox label. Custom checkbox. Okay, so I... Well, I can guess I can put it in the label. Sure, why not? Wrong. Uh, my thing here is just like, is that all the stuff I put in? Oh yeah, 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 so checkbox label, input checked. Okay, whatever. So let's see. My thing here is just make it, um, As close as, like, do as few changes as possible. Didn't work. Crap. So, let's try this. All right. So this is where one of those is like, I... It's too advanced. Like... 
I mean, it can be fine for what it is, but like I need, like what I'm looking for is different. And I very rarely find the like, show me, give me understanding of the thing versus just like, here's a whole bunch of stuff to copy and paste and eventually you'll start to figure it out. I don't do this stuff that much. So I, I'm, I'm looking for the, let me just figure it out so I have an understanding of it and then I can apply the stuff and versus a shitload of copy paste and then kind of stumbling my way through it until I kind of understand what's going on. I went the other way. Um, all right, so I just copied all that stuff. I'm just gonna copy all this stuff. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Oh, I can leave that one for now. Oh, wait, did I not have the thing labeled right? Is that all that happened? All right, let's see what this does. Whoops. Okay. Something's messed up. Which is weird because I thought I copied it straight from them. Definitely copying it straight from them. Something exploded. I feel like like that shouldn't happen, right? Uh, oh God, see, I just don't. All right, we're gonna try a different article. Like I'm, I'm done with this one. I'm, maybe we'll come back to it, but like, I've got the gist of what I wanna do. But look at all this code, like, I have no idea what any of that stuff does. I don't mind a lot of code. But like, I want to know what's happening here. Are we back? We're back, okay. All right, so I'm back to the W3 article. That was the App Ventures one. What else we got? That's the, that one. So again, this is all, it's all advanced stuff. It assumes that you know a level that I don't. Yeah, and what I want is like the, I don't know, an entrance into stuff, regardless of your level. Sorry, an environment that you can go into regardless of your level and find the stuff that you need. And like, it's just, it's so all over the place. And especially for easy CSS checkbox generator. Let's try this. Ooh. Funky Checkboxes, it's the name of my new band. Unoffensive Blue Check, nice. How does I click there? Why do I have to download this? This seems weird. Yeah. Can you give me a zip file? Mood. Yeah, it's a zip file, okay. I'm gonna be very careful with the zip file, like, it's 
why didn't you just show me the CSS? By the way, JavaScript version for IE8. This site's been around for a little while. They stopped updating their copyright in 2014. It's one of their last CSS blog. I'm surprised this is still alive. Like, good on them. Hopefully they're not trying to do drive-by software installs. See, you should have a date. Give me a date. Put dates on your stuff. Technology is not evergreen. I need to know when this, like, I have less confidence in anything that doesn't have a date on it. All right, well, let's see what happens. Try and hack me. Creepy. Yeah. Whatever. Input type checkbox. Yes, this checkbox is an absolute. Oh yeah, see this is crazy. They're putting it at minus a thousand pixels, overflow hidden clip. They're doing a totally different thing. to hide it. Input type checkbox checkbox. Wow, they definitely are doing, they're actually editing the checkbox. I don't trust this based off that other thing though. You would think this would be easy. All right, W3, what you got? This one I was on? That's fun. What we can use. Effectively, does this have a date? 2012. Ah, see? God. At least I know that I'm in 2012, so I can understand that that's eight years ago. I'd also like to know when it was edited. Appearance none, of which isn't what we're doing. We're doing that. Um, capacity zero. See, that's actually trying to do the checkboxes themselves. Wait, is this where we started? This is where we started. Or is it? Yeah, that's actually still doing... Ah, it shouldn't be this difficult. Make larger CSS check boxes. How to set the checkbox size. How to make them bigger. Here we go. Come on, Stack Overflow. What you got for me? Uh, 2013. This may work anyways. In case this helps anyone choose some CSS. Jumping off for it. Turns it into a basic rounded square big enough for thumbs and all the background. Input type checkbox. Appearance none. Okay. What are you gonna do for me? Oh, we've got the other. How smart are you with comments? You were smart with comments. That's what I'm looking for. That's all I'm looking for. 
except I would prefer them to be checked, but like, that's okay. Um, uh, cool, okay, fine. Good Lord. Again, that's from 2013, but it works. You get a thing up. You get a thing up. Am I plugged in? Yeah. Um, yeah, see, what I'm thinking is like a series of videos where I run it. So, the, the way that I see this going, and it's not just with me, but it's with others too, kind of contributing into this, would be you find a really specific thing that you want to do and then you walk through how to do it kind of from start to finish and showing the whys and the hows behind it. You can target that at different levels. Well, like that feel, and then, and so for me, it's, it's doing the live stuff and that's where I figure stuff out. And then from there, I can basically make ideas about, okay, when I'm ready to actually record one. But so I don't know, who knows how this stuff will work, but then you could do like a recording of one specifically designed to be straightforward. Cause these are basically big experiments and big bouncing around and all that. But you could do another one that's basically like the refined thing of like, here's how to do this thing. Um, and so like, I've got, I started to do one yesterday. Um, with the with the little code snippet that I came up with that lets you encrypt a, a file um, with credentials in it and then decrypt it with Python using the GPG tool. Um, I can't really I'm not going to put that video up because I found out later that there was uh, that I needed to add one more section of code to it or one more split to it to because of new line basically new lines screwed things up. And I couldn't test that I, when I, I built it live, but I couldn't test it on stuff because I was live and I did I couldn't show my credentials. Um, and I thought and so I, I it spit out the string. And I thought it was working, but then I realized later it wasn't. So I need I need to go back and redo that. But so I've got there's these video or there's these there's these which are kicking around and looking at stuff. And then there would actually be the refined ones that are like, okay, here's a specific thing. And so the way that I'm thinking about doing that is basically on YouTube, just to make them easier, or like on the, the, the video on demands, the VODs, to preface them with like live coding for like just this stuff. And then like for a specific how to, it would be like how to X. Um, but what I'd love to see is more people doing that and, and not doing it to like try and get clout and followers and not trying to make really long videos like because like every now and then you'll go and like i'll see a video that's like about a pretty particular thing but it's like seven minutes long when it's really only about 45 seconds of the thing that you need to do and another 45 seconds of introduction about you know the the why behind it or the how behind it and, and that's fine like they can be different links or whatever, but like, I don't know. It's just like, it feels, it feels like we should have this copus of of things to reach for, of videos and texts to reach for. And like, I'm sure a bunch of this stuff is out there, but it's just, it's not, it's not filtered in or filtered out or filtered whatever, right? So like, it's, I don't know, so I, I guess I figure, well, part of me is like, we should start a thing, but like there's there's a bunch that are already there. And so I guess part of this is also gonna be an experimentation to look around and see what else is out there and try and figure out how to like create the stuff. Cause like in a bunch of the stuff too, like um, there, what was the, on rails? See if this is still the one.
Rails tutorial. Yeah, by Michael Hartle. Um, I wonder if he's still doing this the same way. Oh, uh, he's, I think he may have changed it. So it used to be that you could do the Rails tutorial for free. Like everything was online just as a, as a piece of text, as like a, a start to finish um, big web, web page. This looks really good. Um, but it looks like he's charging for it now. And like, I don't, I don't specifically have a problem with charging for stuff. But there's also this weird thing about it. It feels like for now, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I struggle with that. Like, it, but it feels, so it feels to me. So every, um, Everything that I learned on web stuff, I learned, for, eh, not for free, I bought some books. Like, I don't know, uh, I struggle with this. Um, I'm fortunate enough that right now in my life, I can do, I can make this stuff, I can make the stuff that I do. I don't need to worry about charging for the stuff that I do. Um, it's just, it, I, I don't have to consider that. Um, now, if somebody wants to pay me a bunch of money to do this full time, let's talk. But there's there, like the there's not a financial pressure on me. It's like, oh shit, I got to get this stuff. I got to make something and sell it. Like that's not a pressure that I'm under, and I'm really lucky and privileged for that. Uh, and so I kind of whatever. I'm getting all philosophical, right? But I feel like I owe it. Why is that not? You can't select that text. That's one big image. Oh my God, dude. Oh, there it goes. Um, I don't know, I just feel like, especially with... I like the idea of the core stuff being available to anybody and everybody. I don't, I don't, just I, like I'm not against teachers and professors and authors getting paid, and like I don't know how we how we level set on that. Like, so if I made, well, so some is the market, you know, the market will decide. Like some of it back and forth. Like, search engines are going to take you to this before you take you to my stuff. So you would see this, and you may never see my stuff. So you don't know that I've got free stuff. But if you put enough good. And I like the idea of like open, well, not just open source, but free open source. I don't know, stuff that, that goes into the commons. Um, it really, I don't know, I think we can do, well, drop frames, 181,000. That's not so good. Uh, it really, I don't know, it feels like we can't, like it feels like right now, we have an opportunity that if we pay attention to it, we can put, we can change the way things work. Like things are changing in the way that the education world works right now because a bunch of colleges are all remote. Um, and the system was already under stress. So I don't know, I, like, I need to make a vlog about this instead of just rambling on a live stream with zero people there. Um, but whatever, like somebody may watch this at some point. And also this is how I figure stuff out. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I figure, I figure the way to do this is to just kind of keep doing the live coding stuff and then slowly but surely also make how to stuff that's more specific that can actually go into that, like into the, into the archive, into the, into the library, basically, where it's like, here's, <laughs> here's slots of everything 
that you would want to know about programming. And it's like, well, let's fill this slot today. And there's one billion slots, so it's like it's a never-ending thing. But like you could do, like I wonder what it would take to do a solid 101 course. I kind of want to try that. Um, and I think I'm going to stumble into doing that. I don't want to put the effort into doing that right now because I'm just kind of getting level set on some of this other stuff. But like that's that's a thing that I think will naturally happen as I go over this is I'll, is I'll, I'll do parts and pieces of um, of that over time and just kind of keep keep filling in slots, maybe not all directly in the in the same line or in the same vein. But um, yeah, that's interesting. OK, whatever, enough of that. I should not be drinking caffeine. Um, all right, so let's get out of some of this. Um, see, part of me, yeah. Every line should be explained. Everyone should be explained. It's my new metric for judging educational coding materials. Coding educational materials? About coding. Good. Also. Off! Oh, fuck off! Twitter? Do anything instantly. It's like, whoop, nope, can't see any of that shit. Fuck. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, Jamstat. We're gonna about Jamstat. The concept is simple. You put pre rendered static files on a website or CDN, or web hosting CDN. It's not to do that well. That's it. If you need more, anything you do is on a client side JavaScript, which is likely. Talking to serverless functions because that's your partner in the Jamstack back end. Okay, yeah. I'll read this later. It's kind of longer than I thought. Um, do we have, oh. let's see what CSS tricks have. I've, I've been adding more and more. Watch this be the same song and now I'm nodding my head to it. Oh my God, really? CSS tricks, how do you not have an RSS feed? JavaScript. There you go. God damn it. No, I don't want to open a news app. I that's frustrating as shit, Apple. Let's actually see, is it somewhere down there? Jobs advertising feed. Okay, there it is. Get URL. So this is frustrating. As I can tell, as far as I can tell, there's not a way for me to send this to someplace other than news. And like, come on, Apple, don't be a dick. I use my own reader, not news reader. Oh, I've already subscribed to it. Is that what it said a minute ago that I've already subscribed? Never mind. Sorry. Probably worked fine the first time. That's on me. Uh, I get that.
What was I doing? Built-in types. I don't remember what I was doing there. There's my split. Oh yeah, what's your split? Oh yeah, I don't know what that was. Jupiter. Self invertible 2D log Geiger wavelets is kind of cool. That's what it is. Python and Jupiter, or well, Python can do so much. Just, computers can do so much stuff, but I like how Python has it going. Leaf page. You were almost, you were getting there, app it, and then you worked it at the end. Or actually in the middle. Okay, this is bad, but I'm not gonna hit it. I don't know why it decides to put it on the other monitor when I make a new tab. What are we doing? Checklist. Yay! Look at this. Let's try 14 pixels and see how that looks. Oh, too small. 20 pixels, 20 pixels. Ah, 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 ah. I like that. I can get that pretty easily. Uh, there's like this, I swear there's not supposed to be, but I swear there's just this tiniest bit of delay coming across this Elgato thing. Um, it may all be in my head, but it really feels like there's a delay. Um, this is cool, because I can just go click, click, click. Uh, and like what I could do is, I could, I'm sure I could set it up to actually do like tab and like I could go down and do it with hotkeys instead of actually having to do the mouse. That'll be something that we do at some other time. Um, but what we do need to do is, uh, let me see if I got this actually. Nesting variables. I'm not seeing anything. Um, styling list. See again, like I, all that stuff is W3 schools and like. That's the style. No way. Oh, that's for the image that's in there. I gotcha. Keyword value, what's this? See these all, uh, UL style none, Let's see what that does. Boom. I didn't want the bullets there. So now, Let's just try this line item, padding, whatever, eight pixels. Like it doesn't matter that it's the top and the bottom or whatever. That was a little much. Cool, now I've just got a little separation. Um, how, all right, I'm gonna just cheat this. Uh, oh wait, I don't need those spans anymore. So check this out. I'm not using those. And what I can do, I just want a little space there. So I'm totally gonna cheat this right now and just add a couple spaces. Again, so like, 
I'm making a decision about like how much I want to mess with stuff and how much I want to like just get it out the door. So this is a just get it out the door. Uh, I'm not an expert in this stuff, so like that's fine. Because what I want to do is push it a little bit like that. Uh, and then... Where am I going? Uh, bu 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 bu. Let's try font size of 1 EM. Font size. Font size. What are you gonna do? We're apparently already there. I don't know if that's actually gonna work. It did, okay. Uh, 1.2. See, somewhere there's a way to fix this, where it would actually stay. Maybe not. I mean, I'm sure there is. Uh, you know what I could do? This would totally be cheating, but I could actually make that a table. And drop it that way. Yeah, so again, I'm gonna go with what I know right now, cause I'm not, it's not worth my, t like I'm just messing around, but it's not worth my time to really, at the moment, to try and like figure out how to like move that over. That would be something that I could go spend a couple hours on probably trying to figure out. Like I just spent a couple hours trying to, or an hour and a half trying to figure out how to make the checkboxes bigger. Um, but so, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna find the right application. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make this table row with the table cell. It's around our checkbox. Close off that cell, make a new cell. Whoops. Close off that cell, close off our row. on that get those out of there and we're gonna do table whoops and then paste that and this font size is gonna go wrong again but now we've got it Better. <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, all right, we're gonna make that a little bit bigger. So that's totally a little bit of a hack, but it works. I'm gonna go three here, and I'm gonna go 22 here. Um, and I can actually do this. TD, padding, bottom, four picks to give us a little extra space. So it's not, well, why did I, oh, because we lost uh, this. Is it going here? There we go. Uh, and once again, I wanna put, oh, so I, we can actually do, and then padding, since they're all the cells, left, right, doesn't matter. Um, This is how we can put in that space uh, here in between our checkboxes and the text. We can just do that, and that'll give us a little space. Uh, but so now it's it's lined up under there like that. Um, tab space, tab space, tab space. That works automatically because it comes out of the box, and we're done. Um, and then we refresh it, and it goes back to normal. There's my checklist. Check. List? Yeah. Um, very cool. I'm happy with that. I like that a lot. Uh, I guess I should do this, though. Uh, oh, 
launch pad. Close that. Why did that not fire? I think I'm doing something different. Uh, whatever, that's fine. That's not how you do it on the other page, but it'll look at me there. Um, cool. Make a pit stop. That's cool. That's really cool. That's super weird because that other article was talking about how you couldn't adjust checkboxes. And then the article that was from several years prior showed how to adjust checkboxes. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's not like style style, but like changing this, that, like this is doing what I want. Um, where's the other? Take that out, what happens? Yeah, nothing. Okay, so you gotta have the checks checked. Um, there's probably a way to actually make it show up as a checkbox, but I like the black just fine. Like, whoops, so it's not working because I need to refresh. Um, like, that's great. That's actually a really good visual indicator of like you're done. Shift tab, get you back. If you miss. That's really cool. Uh, all right. And just because, why not? Let's actually go. Nope. Oh my God, I don't have that in Git. I'll do that later. Um, cool. Uh, I'm trying to think if I want to do anything else right now. I kind of don't. Like I'm pretty happy with that. Let me see what it looks like in Safari. Uh, check this. Cool. Oh yeah, I've got that, do I have that? Yeah, the font bumped up a little bit um, to make it easier for y'all to see on the stream. Uh, yeah, there's probably a way to get this stuff centered up a little bit better. Maybe, I don't know, because that's probably setting the height. I don't know, I'm not that worried about it. It looks fine. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, let's just see real quick. Oh, so the other thing we've got, we can go back here, and then I've got my, where did my, I didn't put it on there yet. Um, let me put that on there. The Twitch ideas. Why didn't you do this one yet? Yeah, interesting, I didn't put that up yet. So I've just been throwing in some ideas on stuff to potentially do. This. Nope. That is the launch pad. Uh, I should clear that right now because I'm not going to use it until. Well, actually, at some point. Set up. Process to grab. just some ideas that I've had for stuff that I can do on the stream. Uh, checklist.
And then... Twitch Hell 2's ideas. Wow, it got that? That's cool. I just picked that up autocomplete somehow. That's cool. All right, Sublime Text. I like it. I spent lots of time on Sublime Text 2, but you're pretty freaking solid. Uh, so let's see what those look like now. Um, don't like it with that. Switch ideas. So it's just a bunch of stuff I've been thinking that, of doing. Oh yeah, actually scratching some stuff off. Um, build a gift display page. That's one I want to do soon. Um, make way to set tiles. Yeah, so just some other stuff to like mess with. Um, set to a page so it's in Markdown. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, this is just stuff to mess around with. Yeah, okay, this I've actually done, or I don't need to do. Like, it, I did that already. Or when you encrypt it, you are encrypting it with a public key. You don't really encrypt it with a private key. Uh, so let me find my ideas. Let me scroll down. Public. Second me there? Yep. <sighs> Whoops. Yeah, here's a JavaScript one that inverts the order of lines. Um, set up an email that we can use for demo stuff. All kinds of stuff in here. Uh, but I think that'll probably do it for now. I don't really want to bump anything else. I'm going to take a break and then uh, I'll come back later and cut some GIFs with some, listening to some music. Uh, so I'm not, this is free music because this, no, it's not free. This is music that I've licensed that can be played over streams uh, or VODs. I'll play some contemporary stuff or some just whatever. Um, Spotify is what it's really called uh, now. And yeah, so that's it. So thanks for watching, folks. I uh, hope you had a good one. We'll uh, we'll do it again soon, possibly in like 20 minutes when I've got some gifts, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do the other ones soon too. So have a good one. See you around. Take care. Be kind. Bye.